Gentlemen, and we are officially live. What's up? It's Mike Wall back again with another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast, where we deconstruct the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agent so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. Super excited today to be talking to my man, Mr. Mike Odo, about my favorite topic, lead generation. And this could not come at a better time. More than 50% of the agents in our local marketplace here have not made a dollar in 2019. And so in addition to the podcast, I'll be doing a free event in Columbus on September 24th. If you're interested, you can register at 100krealtor.com, but hurry because seating is limited and our date and event sold out. All right, enough about me. Let's get to the show. Mike, how are you, man? I'm doing well, brother. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about this conversation. Um, lead generation is, is probably my favorite thing to talk about. You know, um, I tell my, my agents this, anybody I ever talk to is like, if you don't have leads, you don't have a business. Yep. hundred percent. So, so tell me this, man. Um, tell me a little bit about like how you got to where you are. Like, what is your, what is your function? And you, you, I mean, you've generated over 11 million leads, but there's a backstory behind that. Yeah, for sure. You know, I started in the real estate business um, early in life. I started selling real estate at 17. I got licensed right about 1920, uh, right in there. I can never remember which, if it was 19 or if I was 20. I just know yeah. I couldn't buy beer, right? <laughs> uh, 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 so I moved to Lake of the Ozarks and I didn't know anybody. I had no sphere. I'd never been there and I got a real estate license. And so I had to figure something out um, because that is a pretty, pretty grinding process. You know, yeah. uh, uh, the broker I had was like old school open up the phone book, start with the A's, you know, survey everybody, anybody, you know, looking to buy or sell any real estate in the near future. Yeah. And it's just typical. Hello. Hello. You know, after they hang up on you. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, like it was just, it was just, it was a tough racket. I mean, I had people slam the door in my face, door knocking, you know, get out of here, get a real job, kid, <sighs> you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I just, I, I, I believed I was, I was gullible enough to believe uh, Tony Robbins quote that was success leaves clues. Yeah. And so I started digging around to try to figure out a better way. And unfortunately it wasn't in my market that any of the agents had a better way, but I tried to copy them first. I had to go outside of my market to learn some techniques and principles that um, served me well uh, by, by, uh, the age of 23, I found uh, online lead generation, and then yeah. three years later, I was number one in my market from implementing it. And, um, that's how that's how I got into the lead space. Yeah, obviously, I'm in a different capacity uh, uh, in that realm today. Yeah, um, so that was kind of the, the the journey, if you will. Yeah. So there's so much to unpack there, man. So talk about like. So if I remember correctly, the online lead, lead generation space was introduced in, in like the early 2000s to mid 2000s. Yeah. Yep. Yep. For sure. Um, you know, for me, it was uh, uh, Craig Proctor originally that kind of like opened that world up. Yeah. Um, he, he had studied a guy named Dan Kennedy. And of course, I'm never stopping. You know, I'm like, well, what, where did this guy learn this? You know, I flew in here. There's like 2000 agents all paying a thousand dollars a piece or whatever it was. It was a significant amount of money. I'm like, I want to learn that, too. Um, and so really direct response marketing uh, uh, was the craft. But what most online lead generation is, even today, Mike, is is still kind of the tried and true techniques um, that have yeah. just been digitized. Uh, for example, online home evaluations. You know, I used to send out paper certificates that looked like coupons. And I was always like shocked when, you know, the elderly lady would pull that thing out three years later to redeem it. You know, and I'm like, wow, yeah. you know, she wants a home evaluation. And, and so those things still hold true today. There's just a better way to get in front of the people. Yeah. So so in what I'm hearing you say is um, some of the foundational pieces are still the same. And what's so cool about that, man, is if you look at if you look at real estate success as a whole, you understand that a lot of the foundational principles are still exactly the same. But like you said, a lot of it's just been digitized. Right. Yeah. Really, really, at the end of the day, it's a contact sport. It's about it's about talking to as many buyers and sellers as you can um, and, and, and being able to scale that and, and being able to turn those those conversations into appointments and those appointments into closings. Absolutely. I think the thing that people kind of make overcomplicated is, um, you know, the fact that in general, in real estate, we can't. The, the only reason to run an ad is to get somebody to raise their hand. We can't sell our service to somebody. Uh, 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 over an ad necessarily, yeah. right? We can't sell the house over the ad. Nobody's going to pick up the phone and say, hey, I saw this house and I want to yeah. buy it, right? So what's the reason to run the ad? The reason to run the ad is to get them to raise their hand so that we can talk to them, get in front of them, and yeah. ultimately 
uh, prove to them our value and, and turn them into a client. And so, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I might be oversimplifying a bit, but that's still the principle. And that's still, you know, I don't, I don't see that changing in the foreseeable future for, yeah, our, for sure. our industry. Yeah. So I, I, let's talk through this a little bit because I, I want to talk, I want to speak a little bit to the inexperienced state agent who, who may not be um, as, I guess as up to date or as up to speed potentially as we are uh, about, you know, um, some of the technicalities as it relates to lead gen. But like, I want to be able to, like you and I both know it all starts with leads, right? We, we, we understand right. that. And, you know, there's the old way there's, you know, like your old broker did, he gave you a phone book and said, Hey, bro, start dialing. Here's the phone. Right. And that's yeah. one way to generate leads. It's not the most efficient or most effective way. And then there's, you know, fast forward that to today and there's some, you know, there's some ninja, some greasy, grimy stuff going on, man, where you're really generating some, some good quality leads. And then there's everything in between that. So right. to that, to that novice agent or that agent who, who, who maybe is just getting around to being able to start to spend a little money on, on, on online leads, like what, what, what kind of conversation do you have with them, Mike? You know, um, in general, I don't because <laughs> it's yeah. not my ideal client profile. But sure. I will tell you this: um, I have a heart for that person because that's yeah. who I was. Um, I think I think having an understanding of what I just said, you know, the only reason to run an ad is to get someone to raise their hand is paradigm shift number one. Uh, number two is you know, in the process of of, of lead generation, you can have um, you know the the, the kind of high rejection techniques of calling people or knocking on doors or calling fizzbos or expireds when they're not expecting your call, they don't want you. Or you can learn how to attract people, and attracting people is kind of like fishing. You know, I, my, my, I'm from a lake area, you know, so I always yeah. like to create things to stuff that I know. In fishing, if you want to catch, you know, uh, 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 the right fish, you got to have the right bait. And so, right. uh, in order to catch a buyer, you got to have something of interest to the buyer, and they're always going to be interested in, you know, uh, early in the process, starting to do research, looking at homes, looking at neighborhoods, looking at areas. They want to see pictures of those homes, right? They want to have uh, the ability to do some diligence there. But in that buying process, I guess understanding that it's a process to start would be yeah. number two. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're always going to want a couple of things. They're going to want to look at the most homes that they can uh, um, kind of, you know, in a way that is unintimidating. And then they're going to also want to get the best deal. Those things are always going to hold true no matter what price range. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so I think that would be the second paradigm shift. So what can you put out there? that would give them the ability to do that and have the ability to do that in exchange for them raising their hand and giving you their name, email address, and phone number. Sure. Um, I think that that's where I'd start with a novice agent, just getting them kind of an, it, it, just an awareness. You know, yeah. um, It doesn't have to be um, like I was originally. I, I always I forget the cartoon, the dog, hey, spike, hey, spike, hey, spike, hey, spike, you know, yeah. uh, uh, with every single person that you get with. Um, Man, I could just go on about the funny stories. Uh, uh, hand out business cards at, at, at the nightclub, finding them in the urinals five minutes later. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, just just the typical like. Oh, you were trying to pick those out, brother. <laughs> I, you know, I I, I wasn't, um, and I would say that it like was expected, but at the same time, it still hurts. You know, yeah, yeah, I just had a yeah. conversation with this person, but just yeah. you know, um, it doesn't have to be like even on your business card. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> They're like, damn. You know, I paid money for that. Yeah. And it's my face on there. Hopefully somebody will see it and call me. Nobody ever does. Um, yeah, so you know, I, I I guess the other thing is 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 people don't care about you from um and that's harsh, but they don't care about you from a, a perspective of accomplishing their goal of buying or selling real estate. You know, most of us want to put out like stuff all about us and um that is not a good attractive lead magnet to get somebody to respond early on. That's something you want to do in your, in your marketing mix as you grow, but um, not to generate leads. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's, I was talking about, I, I actually just came from a meeting with another agent and we were talking about um, online lead gen. We were talking about Facebook leads versus like PPC leads and, and, and Zillow leads. And there's, there's really, there's leads in all different, um, areas of the funnel, you know what I mean? There's top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel stuff. And, and like, you, you know, you, d depending on what, you, what your bait is, right. Is, is where you're attracting these leads. And, you know, like, like for instance, with Facebook, I mean, you know, that typically you're hitting a buyer or seller um, when they're, you know, flipping through photos of their family or looking at kitten videos or whatever, and you're meeting them there. So that might be a really high top of funnel lead, right? So you're, you're, you're peaking their interest, then they're clicking on the ad versus, 
your pay-per-click lead where they're actually going on Google or being one of the search engines and they're typing, you know, what city, number of bedrooms, bathrooms, and then they're getting a, a, a site, clicking on the site and then registering, giving their information, right? Yeah. So, so that's the difference between uh, interruption-based and intent-based, right? Yeah. So interruption-based is you're getting up in their feed. Intent-based is they're scroll, reaching their fingers out and typing in homes for sale in whatever city. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, there, there, there is a difference in uh, the, the, the process of where they're at in that lead. And I think we should break down top of funnel because people say that. Nobody knows what the hell it means, you know? And sure. so top of funnel means early in their journey, early in their process when they're just starting to think about buying a home. Like they just had another kid, they know that they're gonna need another bedroom and they're starting to, 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 to maybe do a little searching for it or think yeah. about it where in that process if they see an ad that says search for all homes in you know whatever metropolis area, click here, they, it might become contextually interesting at that time whereas it might not have been before but that's early in the process. When they're typing out on Google, that's basically what they're trying to do at that point is either hit that variety or look for that good deal because whatever they're using is not really facilitating that or they're just an overachiever, but they're further down the process. Now, the danger of them being further down in the process, Mike, is um, they might already have a relationship with another agent, Yeah. right? Yeah. The danger of them being early in the process is you probably don't have the skill set if you're a new agent to continue to diligently follow up with them to, to nurture and grow that lead yeah. uh, until the time that their timing is uh, uh, you know ready to make the purchase. And so... Um, you know, it's a it's a uh, a quality problem to figure out, and you yeah. should be able to you should be working on figuring out both of them. To be honest, you yeah, know? that's a great point, man. Um, you know, I like I didn't I never looked at it that way. As if you get them too far down the funnel, that they potentially could have a relationship with another agent, or if you're a newer agent um, or an inexperienced agent, you don't have the resources. Or, or the wherewithal to be able to, to, to nurture that lead until you can set an appointment with them. And it is so true, man. And so is there then, the question becomes, is there a happy medium? And, and you I don't know the answer to that. I, I, I do. It, it's my humble opinion that if you are a new agent and you're trying to figure this stuff out and you're sick of like busting your head up against the wall, not having the success that you deserve, you need to align yourself with a strong real estate team that provides these kind of services for you and can help you learn the techniques that you need to learn in order to be able to either incubate those leads for a long period of time or have the right value proposition for the people who are further down the funnel, right, down towards the end of their buying yeah. process um, so that you can offer them more value in excess of them going with anybody else at that point um, or, or, or just not really seeing any differentiation in you. You know, a lot of times that's what happens. They get a call from an agent and they're like, okay, well, I've said it before, you know, they look at us like a commodity, like a gas station, yeah. whichever one's closest to the side of their street is what they're going to go to. In other words, what's most convenient for them, um, unless you can offer them some value in excess of everybody else in your market. And I think most most of the teams that I've that I've dealt with that are that are good teams, they have some u u unique selling propositions. They have some benefits to doing business with them above and beyond the competitors in their market that are communicated on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you know, they're not meant for lead attraction necessarily, but they're meant for differentiation once you get in front of that person. I think that that would be my answer. You know, if it was my sister or something and she was in another city, I'd be like, hey, let me help you research the right team. Hop on that team, you know? Yeah. Let's talk specifically for a minute about generating seller leads. And um, yeah. I know that, you know, that the old school of thought, and maybe it still is the school of thought today, is, you know, you can you can have a platform, whether it be Market Leader or Commissions Inc. or Boomtown, and there's some sort of a home evaluation tool that's included with that. And that home evaluation tool typically gives a range of value or a value for the home. It may include some recent sales, right? And um, but that you have to get that site in front of the consumer. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, Market Maker, Market Maker, Market Maker. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, and and sorry. Um, but so, but my point is that you take. So the old school thought is you take that URL, right? And you, you take it over to Facebook and then you post the URL in Facebook and it ha it puts a nice little picture there for you. And it says, you know, get your home evaluation or whatever. But a, a lot of the algorithms are changing on Facebook where they don't, they don't, Facebook doesn't want you to take people off their site. And so they're not, they don't, they won't show that to as many people, even if you boost the post that, uh, is, is there a way to get around that, Mike? You know, I don't think we're around it uh, necessarily, uh, but but what I found, which I, I probably shouldn't say, um, is that there's different um, – uh, Facebook and Google are always in competition with each other. Yeah. And what happens for us being the advertiser or end user, consumer of, of, of those two different uh, forms of media to advertise yeah. is um, when one is 
going after or has less customers, they'll then generally lower their price. And uh, Google used to be horrible for home evaluation leads. Yeah. Uh, but what I, what we found um, probably over the past year at least uh, is that because more of the traffic has sucked over to Facebook, yeah. that cost per click is less on Google. And uh, uh, we generally run our home evaluation leads on Google, which is great because they're intent based. At that point, they're yeah. typing in home values in, you know, San Francisco, for example, you know, I mean, whatever metro area. Um, other than that, you know, the only thing you can do on Facebook is, is run a lead ad. Um, it's not going to fulfill the home evaluation because it's not going to take them off the request uh, off the off the platform. Uh, yeah. They're going to have to just hit submit, in which case you're going to have to fulfill um, or have a system in place that fulfills so that you keep that promise that you made to that uh, sure. uh, you know seller. So what what is is that same strategy still working in in seller lead generation today, or is there is there maybe a little more to it now? You know, there's definitely a lot more to it, and that's that's the thing. I mean, most of this stuff has is, is, has been the same, like you've mentioned, for probably 20 years now. Yeah. Um, I find that the best strategy um, is 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 facilitating the home evaluation side of it in a way that gets them to leave us that breadcrumb of information from them to follow up with them. Mm -hmm. But after that point, Mike, the best thing to do is run a branded uh, advertising strategy uh, on a retargeting campaign. And most agents that I talk to, I say, what, what do you know what retargeting is? Like probably 90% say no. So let me yeah. just clarify that when you go to Amazon and you look at a vacuum cleaner and then that vacuum cleaner is following you all around the internet, yeah. that's retargeting, right? So when they fill out that home evaluation, then you want to retarget them with ads that are uh, branded about you, right? Building your status and authority. And generally if you have a USP, right? Like a guaranteed sell program or, uh, 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 buy for me, sell for free, or a guaranteed offer on your home in 24 hours, or I'll pay you a thousand dollars. Like uh, retargeting with those things work really, really well because what happens is when you're talking to that customer now, they in their minds eye have an idea of who you are, and if you can really bolster it with some video in addition to that, directed mm -hmm. to their email based on a campaign that's pre-created, yeah. now you have like and trust in addition, and so. Um, that's the thing that we do at Market Maker, not to give myself a shameless plug, yeah. but we like automate all this for the the, the, the agent, um, and, and then we run different scenarios and campaigns to get them to ultimately uh, fill out a form on a calendar link to set an appointment with the agent to take all that, so that the agent is set up more like a professional, right? They're not chasing yeah. that lead, they're not calling that lead, they're not the one person show at that point. They're, they're, they, I mean, if you call the doctor's office and the doctor answered the phone and set the appointment with you and then met with you when you walked in the door and then was talking about operating or doing the procedure on you, you'd probably be a little freaked out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, setting us up more as a professional is the goal. And it's amazing how well that works, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's all back to that um, chasing versus attracting thing. And, yeah. uh, you know, it is, it is so like, and we don't want to get way over people's head here, but like, right. hopefully most of the people that watch this at least understand this on some level, uh, that this is the future, whether you like it or not, it's the future. Um, you want to, there is so much noise out there for the consumer right now. And, and so when you're talking about retargeting leads, um, seller leads, especially, uh, which usually have a higher CPL, I mean, they're, they're usually more expensive because you generate less of them. Um, you, you to build that digital footprint, that digital resume, um, even while you're sleeping is is priceless. And, and to have somebody that, that has the capability of being able to do that for you is even better. And so but like if you the, the, here's the here's the thing is, is if you're not doing it, it your, your business is in danger because other agents are doing it. And so to stay Absolutely. well, you need to do that on some level. You know, it was so funny in my market when I was first doing this, like I had my broker pull me aside and say, hey, you know, you shouldn't be running these type of ads because they don't do nothing for your brand or your business. You shouldn't be doing this. You should. And then everybody else laughing at me until, you know, I knocked them over. Right. And then after that, you would have thought that they would have just rushed to figure it out. But no, they just do the same old thing. And if you think about like a, a regular like time tested real estate Methuselah method kind of advertising strategy, it's billboards, right? It's like branded advertising, which is like a broad approach. Yeah. And the goal is to hope to build your authority and brand in the mind of everybody. So that when you talk to that buyer or seller, you come with a little panache. Well, that can be done in like a super rifle, rifle targeted way more than I've ever seen in the history of this business today. Um, I don't know how long that'll last. I have, I'm hoping it'll get better and be like minority report, you know, like, yeah. Hey, Mike, how are those jeans? You know, I don't know, but but yeah, if you're not doing this, your competitor probably will. And yeah. even if you're in the top spot, I mean, 
I came, they never saw me coming, you know, right. and there's always that next person that's ambitious and hungry and like a seeker, you know, that's listening to podcasts like this, trying to figure it out. Right. And let me tell you, they, they probably will. <laughs> yeah. 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 So with, with salary lead registration, are you, are you, are you seeing that, um, is there any correlation between what you're doing with sellers and what you're doing with buyers? Are you are you retargeting buyers as well? And if so, oh, are you yeah. retargeting are you retargeting them with the same material or is it is it different? So um, it well, the, it's different as far as the verbiage is concerned, but the right. goal is the same. So we'll put together, for example, a billboard right with the agent's face on it, uh, uh, some information you know that yeah. uh, that uh, hopefully is a USP. If not. We've got some things that are just brand building, uh, maybe a bus wrap, maybe a park bench, uh, a, a bus stop, right? And the goal is uh, to build in the mind of that consumer um, authority and status of, of that agent. And it yeah. works so well. Like what happens is, is, is people don't even know as far as the consumer is concerned that this is occurring to them. And, and what I found is like when I would ask my customers at the end of their journey, like, hey, do you remember how we met? They don't even know. Yeah. Yeah, they, you know, they like you, right? They always like me, and they're always ha and they're very proud. Like I, you know, this yeah. is my agent. You know, at the title company telling the closers, and they're like, "Yeah, we know." You know, yeah, uh, 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 yeah. I was earlier today. I was having a conversation with one of my agents, and um, I think people are really dropping the ball on this, like this video, this content strategy right now, because like, like we're generating anywhere from probably seven hundred to eight hundred leads a month right now. Some mostly buyer, some seller leads. But like, I really feel like we're missing the boat um, in a big way because imagine being able to create a list, right? Imagine being able to, imagine you have a McDonald's, right? And you're mm -hmm. able to create a list of people who love McDonald's hamburgers, right? And you yeah. have this list of people who love McDonald's hamburgers and you own a McDonald's franchise and you're not right. marketing to them at all. You're not, you're not yeah. doing it. And, and so like, like, so for me, I'm, I'm talking to, to my guy today and I'm saying, listen, like, what are buyers thinking about? Like, what are buyers, like, could we interview a home inspector and say, what are the, the three biggest fears that, uh, that, that you know, a buyer might have through the home inspection process, right? Could we interview somebody and then deliver that out to them, right? Like, yeah. Why are yeah. people doing that? I don't get it, dude. It's so well, easy. Here's why. Here's why. Because there's so many things to do in real estate that it's priority confusion. And it's just hard, man. I mean, like, everybody wants to do social media. They know they should be doing social media. But when it comes down to doing it, they're like, what should I do? Should I interview the new restaurant tour? Should I, you know, talk about my kids? Should I show them my dinner and take a picture of that? Hey, where am I? You know, and all the other stuff that they see, it's hard to create a plan around it. And that's, I feel like fundamentally the problem. Um, you should be very specific with your goal. And your goal is this. Number one, don't underestimate what the average consumer doesn't know. You have a tremendous amount of specialized knowledge in your space as a real estate agent. And assuming they know any of it is a mistake, right? Yeah. And so just for example, uh, 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 what to do in a multiple offer situation, right? Uh, as a buyer, that would be something you could do a live on and do a video on. And the cool thing about that is it becomes an asset for your business that lives forever. Right. And what we do in, in our particular platform is uh, um, we have like a drag and drop pipeline. And so depending on their stage of where they're at, you just grab the little tile and drag them to that stage. And it, and it, and it, and it starts this campaign and, and uh, uh, changes the frequency of the duration of these little videos that go out to them via email. And then it also changes the retargeting. The thing that's hard about retargeting is, you know, let's say you have a conversation with somebody and they say, hey, I'm looking to move right away, right? Well, they're in the bottom of funnel. You can't change that person's retargeting one at a time. It's right. just not possible in Facebook. Mm -hmm. But in our platform, if you grab them and drag them and you got that, you got that uh, a particular campaign built out for retargeting, it pushes that lead up to Facebook to retarget them. So at that point, when they're at the bottom of their funnel, right, when they're at the end of their stage, they're ready to buy, yeah. you want to be impressing on them some information of, of, of testimonials, other people telling them that you're good instead of just you with those little picture ads on Facebook, right? Like, right. Mike Wall uh, 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 saved me, you know, $25,000 off the purchase of my home. Never mind it was $2 million, you know. It's still $25,000 yeah. he saved, right? You know, just, just things of that nature with a picture of the real person and, and some, some, some benefits that they received. Um, speaking of testimonials, I think that that's something that's truly missing in the space. Most people don't get testimonials. They don't, they don't even ask. And the trick to that, just to throw some value out there is write them yourself and bring them to the closing table. And after they get done signing everything, ask them to sign that if they agree with it. Right. 
Yeah. Uh, 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 and then snap a picture with them. <laughs> you got a great testimonial, and it's a digital asset. The internet is written in ink. That's what I love the most. The more this stuff you put out there, the more search engine optimization, the more easily you're going to be found, and the more of a head start you're going to have for the rest of your career against anybody who tries to do this in your market, no matter when they start, because you started before them. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it, man. So, you know, and and really, we the 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 topic of the 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 show today was lead generation. But that that whole we we talked about a lot of the back end piece, which really encompasses the conversion, right? It, which is the most it important does. part, right? Because you can generate yeah. as many leads as you want, but if you can't convert well, them, it like it you said, matter. Eight hundred is an astounding number of leads. Like if yeah. a new agent is watching this and they hear you heard you say that, they're gonna be like, "What? Yeah, eight hundred, right?" Well, you're right. I mean, you can generate unlimited amounts of leads, but if you can't turn them into dollars, right. it's worthless. You know. Right. So obviously, you have a machine that's well oiled that converts those leads, turns them into predictable commissions. You know, and that's 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 the secret. Yeah, and so like if we are talking about the conversion piece, I mean we. We know on some level we have to reach out and contact the lead, right? And 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 so what what we were talking about in addition to that is, you know, there are these there are these other sequences that can go out. You know, um, maybe there's a ringless voicemail, maybe there's a text message. It's really it's land, air, sea attack, right? It's it's hitting them on all different fronts, and and that's what help, that's what causes the conversion is you. You kind of meet the buyer or seller where they at, and you spe you start speaking their language, right? Right. You want to win before you begin, and that's why we went into that. I mean, as far as lead generation, if you want, we can kind of circle back to that real quick. Yeah. And just talk about a quick way to generate some free leads. Let's do it, baby. All right. So one of the things that 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 I found is really dynamite right now is uh, Facebook Marketplace, and I go into Facebook Marketplace. I don't see anybody doing this hardly. If you get a little landing page and put together a free list of homes, right? And let's say it's a neighborhood that you want to dominate or uh, a free list of uh, uh, homes available for no money down, right? Which generally is a, a financing uh, 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 sequence, right. you know, yeah. uh, not, not necessarily the home themselves, but sure. lower price homes or free list of foreclosures, right? You can, you can put this little landing page into uh, Facebook Marketplace, put that ad in there, and you will be astounded at how many people fill out that form. You'll have 100 free leads this month just from implementing that strategy. The, the problem is when you get them, that's going to be the, oh, crap moment. Like, what do I do? Yeah. What do I, how, do, how do I turn them into money? What do I say to these people? Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. So that's back to the conversion piece, right? Yeah. It's chicken and the egg. Yeah. So for, like, for you guys right now, um, especially with like using market maker and it's not a new tool anymore. There are a lot of top agents using it uh, across the United States. Um, what kind of stuff are you guys working on right now? Cause I know Reese, man, he's a, he's a mad scientist and I know you're the same way, man. And it's like, you guys have to be working on some crazy stuff. Yeah, for sure. You know, some of it I'll talk about some of it, not yet. Um, um, you know, for me, the, the, the main thing that I wanted to be able to accomplish was the ability to, um, help the agent with that conversion process. Mm -hmm. uh, the hardest thing is to, if you generate 100 leads today, what, what what do you think the conversion rate of 100 leads is nationally for agents? It's probably less than 3%. Mm -hmm. So it's like one to three people out yeah. of those 100 that you're gonna be able to get uh, 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 to do business with. So that's a lot of work, you know? And what we wanted to do was simplify that. So one of the things that we've worked on is what we call a behavioral funnel that yeah. will allow them to automatically sift and sort and set an appointment on the agent who um, has generated that leads calendar mm -hmm. automatically without the agent lifting a finger. And yeah. we've accomplished that and that's gangsters can be, I mean, that, yeah. I wish I had that, you know what I mean? Like I'm getting, I'm getting people, you know, reaching out to me like, Mike, this is saving my business. Mike, this is the best thing ever. Yeah. Oh man, you struck gold, you know, and it just feels good. Um, it, but, but, but even throughout that process, we're still doing the rest, right? So we're still yeah. retargeting those leads so that when they do speak to that agent, when they get on the calendar, uh, uh um, they're like, hey, why, why, why even put yourself on a billboard, right? It's so that you can have an elevated status and so that they'll take you seriously. So we're doing that as well. And I, I'm really proud of that. That's probably the most favorite thing that, uh, uh, we've accomplished as of late. Um, in addition, just, you know, uh, putting things out there that make it easier than ever to create and distribute content. Um, you know, the ability to record a video, 
you know, uh, push that video to all media platforms, transcribe it, make it to a vlog, email it out to your entire database if it's buyer content or seller content or both if it's universal content um, to just stay in front of these people. And again, get that stuff out there. You know, if it's yeah. on YouTube, it's 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 uh, 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 indexed into the World Wide Web. It's going to be there forever. Right. Same with Facebook, depending on your settings. Same with uh, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, 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 Twitter is another one that for whatever reason is still exists, but it's there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I go in there. I, I was like the first guy to ever sign up for Twitter. Nobody knows yeah, that. I have a Twitter account and I never use it. I don't even. I, I think ah. I think it's just for news now, isn't it? Don't people just get the news there? I, I think it's for uh, Donald Trump and maybe The Rock. You know, yeah. I, those are the two guys in my feed all the time. I don't know what's up with Twitter. I mean, I googled like how to add Twitter followers. It's like, oh, add them from other platforms and yeah. announce that you're making posts on Twitter. I'm like, okay, so grow Twitter for Twitter? No thanks. <laughs> So when, let me ask you this, man. Um, when when do you think, like, you said, I know you don't talk to a lot of, like, new agents, but everybody gets to a point in their business. Well, not everybody, but most of the people who are building a business and, and trying to scale, they get to a point to where they want to add some sort of an online lead generation. Um, and 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 then, you know, you, what you or one of your guys has a conversation with them. Like, typically, how would somebody know that they're ready for that, Mike? You know, I think that um, everybody should have online lead generation. I think that you're ready for it when you have at least a minimum of three months of all your expenses in the bank, right? Because you don't want to buy something and then hope that it pans out, and have a dollar and a dream or enough room on your credit card to pay one month and hope you can flip the deal in order to get it the next month. Yeah. Um, so I think that's where it's at. As long as you have core capital and, and you're looking at your business and you're looking to scale it and you realize that you have a business, not a job. Yeah. I think that you're about ready. You know, that's 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 my take on that. I was talking to a gentleman the other day. Um, bless his heart. He's just had a tough, tough year. Had eight family members die. He used to do thirty million dollars a year in volume. He's like, Mike, sometimes I just can't get out of bed. Um, and and I said, you know, and he's like, I'm going to go back to guerrilla warfare tactics. I'm going to go knock doors. I'm going to call fizzbos and expireds. And I was like, listen, man, if it were me, and I was starting from square one. Let me tell you what I would do. Yeah. And I just, I, I said, I would, I would run these ads on Facebook marketplace. I would generate these leads. I would call them myself. Uh, uh, I would, I would use the script and I would get them into my car because buyers are usually the fastest buck right now money. And, and, and I would do that until I got myself the core capital that I needed to where I could reinvest back in my business. I mean, this guy, he, he's like, he's like, man, I'm driving for Uber. He, I said, well, how many deals did you close in the past 12 months? He said zero. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, you know, I, that, that that it depends on where you're at, but I, I mean, all the way down to starting from scratch. You yeah. know, get the free lead gen stuff if that's where you're at. So, where are you like on Zillow? Like, what's your take on that? You know, I think that um, uh, Zillow, Realtor, National Portals in general, um, what they do is is they basically take and run broad lead magnets. Like, if you ever look at their commercials on TV, right? It's it's uh, uh, you know emotional based, you know. Uh, for your dream home, for yeah. your family, for where life happens, right? So they're trying to pull an apple there and like get in your emotions and feel feel good, right? Uh, uh, they're trying to get everybody they can to come search on their platform. So they're not differentiating by price. They're not differentiating by neighborhood. They're not differentiating by anything. Um, it's just if you have a pulse and you like to look at homes, come to Zillow or come to Realtor. Um, and then what they do is they, 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 they generally run this good cop, bad cop strategy where um, once you fill out a form, uh, they are following up with you as Zillow, the brand, with helpful tips and information, content. Um, and then the real estate agent comes behind and is like, hey, would you like to take a look at this house? Yeah. You know, hey, you, did, did, did you want to go see this? Right. Which is very self-serving. Like everybody knows why a real estate agent wants to show a house so they can get a commission. Yeah. So I don't think that they shed the right light. Um, I don't I mean, let's just be honest. They're in business for themselves. And um, to me, it really drives me nuts, especially with Realtor.com. Um, because that's our trademark, you know, that we sold to Rupert Murdoch and News Corp. I think that was the dumbest thing we could have ever done as an industry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but I think, I think, like, look, if you're making money from Zillow, awesome. Just yeah. don't build your business on that foundation as a singular pillar because they do not have your interest in mind. Right. And I don't think they have our industry's interest in mind. I'll tell you the whole iBuyer thing yeah. uh, with Zillow. Um, it really is a threat. I mean, it's a threat to you. It's a threat to me because I'm in the business of helping real estate agents. It's a yeah. threat to our industry. Um, they, if they, I'm the guys who started it, were the ones who disrupted the travel agent industry. 
I mean, they pretty much killed an entire industry, and then they went into ours, and they haven't been able to do it. Now they're like, oh, we think that the world is finally ready. Well, the truth is it takes a generation to change a behavior like that. If you ever read a book uh, called The Culture Code, yeah. they talk about how they were able to sell coffee in Japan when there was no coffee sold. They had to go in and like give the kids coffee-flavored candy, and a generation later, they're selling tons and tons of coffee. Right? Dude, that's so crazy. crazy. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The most co corporations think generationally, right? Yeah. And so I think that that's what Zillow's doing. And I think that if we're not careful, we're going to fund that generational shift. And and uh, uh, I think that you know, as agents, we should strive to use them. Don't let them use us. And if we can uh, eliminate, you know, funding our our, our possible demise yeah. uh, through 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 marketing. You know? Yeah, it's interesting that you say that. You know, it's. Um, I mean, there are some big bucks being thrown at uh, at at, at disintermediating the industry right now, and and uh, certainly the whole iBio thing is it, it. It's interesting. It's it's like to me though. It's like I mean, people have been doing the iBuyer thing for a hundred years. I mean, we send out like we the, the, like investors send out you know ma mailers saying, "Hey, I'll buy your home for cash as is." You know what I mean? We send out twenty five thousand mailers a month, and we like we always try to hit sellers before their house goes on the market. And most in most cases. You know, they don't like our offer, especially in a market like this, because they know they can sell for top dollar. The thing is this, and this is what nobody sees, right? It is not anything other than the process that will differentiate you in the business, right? The process of servicing that customer. If you got a good process for servicing that customer, you got a good customer experience. That's what differentiates you. That's what creates rating plans. And the difference, in my opinion, in Zillow's iBuyer program is their process versus the guy who sends out those mailers or makes those yellow signs, right? Yeah. His process is different than Zillow. Zillow has a better process. And consumers, if they start to appreciate and enjoy this process and that word spreads, uh, can disrupt this industry yeah. tremendously. You know, And I, I'm, I'm being very careful with my words because um, I don't want Veronica Figueroa to bite my head off like she did old Adam Bailey. You know, uh, I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, no. He said something bad about Zillow. Oh, he like, did? Yeah, yeah. He, I remember exactly what he said. He said that um, Zillow is the price you pay for being a bad marketer. He got ripped. Which I truly believe. Yeah, you know? it, it's absolutely same time. true. Listen, man, it is true. At the same time, at the same time, I, 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 I have a lot of respect for her. And so, like, I'm being cautious with my words. I don't want to kick up too much dust. But that's really what I believe. I think that uh, uh, it's fine if you're using it. You know, use it and, and, and don't let it you do. And, you know, get some other skill sets and some other pillars in your business so that you're protected. Because they're going to change based on whatever their goals are, whatever their needs are, whatever their shareholders' desires are. Yeah. And, um, oh, you know, no, it's like crack, dude. It's like we were spending 16 grand a month on Zillow. And we cut it all. We cut it all. We get... That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. I'm impressed. Most people never do, you know. Exactly. And you got to get off it, man, because all they do is they keep squeezing your margins. We noticed like every three months that they were squeezing the margins even more. They've seen That's, how exactly. They push you. That's exactly what happens. You know, I did a little post the other day and I was like, listen, they've got some serious, smart people that are that like actuaries counting those beans. They know how far they could push you, yeah. you know, and they know what you'll do. You'll just go and get a mortgage broker to help you pay for half, and so then they'll take that portion as well. And the friend that I had a conversation with, he wouldn't be prof, he wouldn't even be able to run the the the, the, the same advertising budget, fifteen thousand, almost same, uh, without the help of his lender, wouldn't be profitable. But with those two combined, he still gets an ROI, so he still continues to do it. But damn, I mean, imagine if you put that money into pay per click. Our average cost per lead on a on a home valuation is like five bucks. Yeah. On a buyer lead, it's less, and so you know what's fifteen thousand divided by five dollars. You know what I mean? It's it's, yeah. it's it's a pretty astounding amount of leads. Sure. So, you know, it just depends on what you want to do. They do make it easy because they're at the end of the process. You know, yeah. they're filling out a form about one house, like a sign call, which is very intuitive to us as real estate agents to convert, and so it feels just easy. You know, yeah. Uh, um, but but at the same time, you're they probably filled out a lot of forms. <laughs> you ain't the only frog they're kissing. Yeah, there are probably six or seven other forms, and they got other people calling them and sending them emails and all that stuff. So, you, you know, that's when it. That's when, like you said, it, it, that's when it becomes it, it, critical that you know your what happens after the registration is really tuned in. And you know, to you new agents, uh, Mike, you you alluded to that. You know, if you don't have those systems, those processes in place, you can always join a team, somebody that's doing it at a high level, learn from them build up your operating account until you can go out and do that again on your own.
Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, at the end of the day, I always thought that for sure as an industry, we would find an answer to the national portals, you know, yeah. uh, uh, collectively. And we just we just have it. We just have it. And, yeah. uh, man, and I'm, I'm the so funny thing is, you, uh, we, we, we supply them the data. Like, oh, I know. You just turn the switch off and then they'd be done. It's but you said like you said it's like crack you know it becomes this interdependency you know if we could if we could create our own that 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 uh, uh, was governed by us right that that would be the ideal scenario to put an end to this thing and protect the industry entirely um, and and you know I'm who knows who knows maybe maybe it can be done maybe maybe we'll pull it off someday as a as a whole as an industry I'd love to see it. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir, dude. Well, it's truly been a pleasure, man. I, I so enjoy talking to you, man. And, and again, Likewise. lead generation, one of my favorite topics. How can people reach out to you, brother, if, if they want to learn more about uh, about what you're doing at Market Maker or just have questions about generating leads? Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. So I'll go into my little spiel sure. that I always go into. Uh, what we do at Market Maker is we generate leads. We nurture those leads to elevate the brand uh, status and authority uh, of the agent who is generating those leads in the mind of those particular leads, uh, and then ultimately deliver them as a, a, a an appointment on their calendar. And if you want to know more about that, you can go to marketmakercall.com, marketmakercall, like calling on the phone, .com. Awesome, brother. I could literally talk for hours about lead generation. Me too. And speaking yeah. of lead generation, I'll be showing you how I generate more than 700 leads a month at my free event in Columbus, Ohio on the 24th. You can go to 100krealtor.com and register for your free ticket. As usual, I love sharing these stories week after week because I know this show is literally changing agents' financial lives, my own included. Do me a big favor. If you know someone that might enjoy the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe. And if you want to jump on a 30-minute call with myself for a free business strategy session, please go to meetmikewall.com. And that's it for this one, folks. All right. Thank you. See you. See ya.